What's up, BLV NHL? It's me, John, and I'm here with the one and only Fitty Trent. And we are here to recap the first of three recaps tonight with the Senators and Habs. And in my opinion, this was not one of the best games we will see this year. Uh, it was two teams that have struggled their fair amount this year. The Sens, who are on, were on a six-game losing streak, and the Habs, who on a two-game winning streak now, because in my opinion, all because of Carey Price. So you come into this game, the Sens want to get out of this hump. Everyone on the team wants to get over this, and they're going to have to get past a hot goalie in Carey Price in the last couple games. So first period, in my opinion, it was mostly mostly the Senators, even though um, both teams didn't have much going on. It took to halfway uh, through that first period. Actually, no, sorry. Like basically, basically not much was going on. But Mark Stone scores on on. Sorry, Habs were on the power play. I was going to say the Sens were on the power play, but the Sens were 0 for three on the power play tonight. The Habs were on the power play. Mark Stone steals the puck, goes all alone on Carey Price, and finishes it on the backhand. 1-0 Ottawa. Like I said, it was mostly Senators, even though there was not much going on, but that was just in my opinion. They had probably a little bit of that edge. But you know Carey Price, he's going to keep the Habs in it, and it's just going to take that one goal from the Habs to get them back in the game. And that's all it took. Jonathan Drouin broke out through the neutral zone, got past the defenseman, gets hooked. It was, it was kind of like a hook trip. You, you can call it what you want. He gets the penalty shot. Mike Condon, who hasn't been that great this year, who basically saved the Sens season last year. Jonathan Duran comes up, low left side, off the post and in. you got a 1-1 game. Like I said, Carey Price is going to keep you in the game, and it just takes one opportunity like that, and Montreal ties the game. It's 1-1. Then, I will give it to Montreal. That second period, they started actually doing something i do like i even though i'm a leafs fan and i will hate on the habs they suck either way they have not been doing well and they've only been doing well the last couple games because of carry price but you know what that second period they were they were aggressive patch ready shaw and deno those three guys were the best pair, were the best line in that second period and they're the line that would score patch ready on the four check pat taps it over to shaw shaw kind of like dabbles with it at the boards there, and then he finally reverses it back to Dano right in front, and Dano uh, slaps it in for a two-one Habs lead, and obviously that's how it would stay. The Sens could not finish in that third period. Carey Price was lights out completely. I did miss a little bit of that third period because I was so focused on the Lightning Bruins that we're gonna recap after this. That was an insane game, uh, but. Like I said, what I watched in that third period, the Senators could not finish, and that is solely on the matter of Carey Price. The Habs were so sloppy. They had four guys hammed into that corner trying to shut them down, but the Sens would still get the shot off, and it was Carey Price who shut them down. The Sens had three shots in that last six seconds, and Carey Price flashed his glove a couple times. So you know what? The storyline for me tonight was, again, Carey Price. Carey Price shut the Senators down. Montreal won 2 1. And Montreal also missed two empty nets that Trent laughed about with me over our group chat. But now I'm going to hand it over to Trent. Trent, what are your thoughts on this game? I, I mean, I agree with you. This game was nothing overly exciting. You know, this was one of the fan picks. And yes, usually you only get one pick if you're a fan. Like cause on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we do the fan picks. But this was so close. It was like. 39% to 41%. So we're just like, screw it. Let's do both like games. Do the Winnipeg Jets versus the Colorado Avalanche and do the Montreal Canadiens versus the Ottawa Centers because it was so close. So luckily you guys got three games tonight. This was the one that you guys were so close to at picking for being your fan pick. So we decided to go with it since John saw most of the game. And, you know, from what I saw, I didn't get to see most of the game either. But honestly, from what I saw, I think John nailed it right on the head. It was very unexciting. It was very... Not very thrilling. As he said, Carey Price definitely held them in that game if you were a Montreal Canadiens fan, which on my shirt, I mean, if you know me, that is my second favorite team because my mom was actually born in Quebec. So, you know, by, by blood, it has to be my second favorite team at least, you know. So it's the kind of thing where, like, I've always loved Carey Price, but Carey Price proves night in and night out. He is the only player for the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, a couple years ago when he got injured in the Montreal 
Canadians were undefeated until he got injured. And then they ended up missing the playoffs because they were doing so terribly without him. They only won like 20 more games for the rest of the season or something like that without Carey Price. So it was the kind of thing where, yeah, Carey Price, you know, he's proving that he is the only player to really get it done. Shea Weber did not play tonight. I know a lot of people think that Shea Weber has been one of the best players in Montreal Canadiens. He's next to being the only other player on the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, when he was brought in last year, it was basically like he had to be given everything because they had no defenseman. He had to be the offensive defenseman and the defensive defenseman and the best two-way defenseman. So he kind of had all the pressure on the world against him, and he had to do everything and anything in his power. But he didn't play tonight. The rest of defense tonight, I mean, some of them played okay. I mean, Carl Alsner, I know that we've been really hard on him this season. Tonight, he had one of his better games, though, with four big block shots. He had three hits. He had three shots on goal. You know, Jordy Ben played an okay game. He had a couple hits. Besides that, Joseph Morrow looked like he had the best game of his entire career. That's not saying much because he sucked so long in the entire NHL. But tonight, he actually had three shots on goal, three hits, and he looked okay. Jonathan Drouin, I mean, he's just not fitting correctly yet with the Montreal Canadiens. It's still taking him a little bit of time to grow. He's playing at that center position, which he never played with Tampa Bay, as we always said. He played one year with the Halifax Mooseheads as a center, but that's only when Nathan McKinnon ended up getting drafted and playing with the Colorado Avalanche during his first year, and the Tampa Bay Lightning dropped him to the minors. So that was his one and year only year playing that center position, and Honestly, tonight you can look at him and say, yes, he had almost 90% on the faceoff draw, but that's just because, honestly, Montreal dominated the Senators on the faceoff draw. I mean, you look at the stats, and they had won 65% of the draws compared to Ottawa's 35. Usually, Ottawa's a pretty good like center depth team with players like Zach Smith, you know, Derek Broussard, the addition of Matt Duchesne, but tonight... You could really see that they weren't feeling it. They weren't doing very well on the puck. They weren't doing very well whatsoever. You know, John and I were talking about how inconsistent Matt Duchesne has been with the Ottawa Senators going into, you know, getting traded from the Colorado Avalanche to the Ottawa Senators. He had 10 points in 14 games, which on a team that was the worst team in the NHL last season, that's something very, very well to talk about, especially when you had Kerfoot and Yakupov, the struggling player beside you, you know, a rookie that's not done anything. You're helping him out, and then you're helping out the first roller draft pick who ended up being a bust. I mean, you know, he had a big future. Coming into Ottawa now, he has one goal in nine games played. He just looks very slow, looks very inconsistent, looks very out of place there with the Ottawa Senators. And to prove my point about how poorly they played tonight, Zach Smith was their leading shot taker with five shots. Zach Smith is that kind of guy that takes about two shots every single 20 games. He's that good penalty killer. He's that good guy in the faceoff. He's not the shot taker. So if he's the one that needs to take shots for you guys, you know that you're in trouble. And Carey Price, back from injury, looking absolutely great tonight. Trent, man, you said it, buddy. You said it. And it's – I'm smiling because it's, it's kind of – I'm just laughing in my head. Me and Kev talked about it. These two teams right now, there's there's no cohesion. This team, these two teams, Montreal is basically all Carey Price. Ottawa is supposed to be a lot of Eric Carlson. And Eric Carlson right now is, um, he, you could say it's his ankle or you could say it's no one's helping him. But either way, like you said, Zach Smith was their leading shot taker. Matt Duchesne, their power play was disgusting in like a horrible way tonight they were 0 for 3 they were doing nothing uh for some reason they they're trying to change it up and i think they just made it worse they usually have mark stone in front of that net trying to go for the tip trying to go for the rebound tonight they had him on the point for some reason with alex burrows in front uh they had duchene low into the post which made no sense to me eric carlson was just sitting there picking his ass probably I don't know but they were doing nothing it looked like it, it, I'm a Leafs fan so I should be just happy with these two teams struggling but as a hockey fan and as a guy that loves hockey I do not like watching this um, I spent my time watching a lot of this game and it was not something that I liked the only thing I took out of this game is like I've said a couple times is the fact that Carey Price was lights out um, I think he had about 29 30 saves uh, I could be wrong. It was about there. But uh, without him, it would have been the Sens who probably would have won 3-2 or 2-1. Um, and that's still a low-scoring game. That's still not to be so crazy about. 
The Sens should be better than this. Um, I, like I said before, I do not like their offense, how it's constructed together, especially with the Duchesne accusa- uh, equation. Um, you have Duchesne at the top. Then you have the second line, Bobby Ryan. They're pretty similar players. There's not much there. Now you have Zach Smith, who's supposed to be that good third-line center. Now he's on your left wing on your second line. I don't know what that's adding to it. Um, their bottom six is nothing good at all. And their defense, I think they need a change. I think they need to bring up Thomas Shabbat. I think they need to add that sauce. Like, like Mitch says, I think they need to add something more sexy. So I think they need to get Thomas Shabbat up. I think they need to make a better – they lost Kyle Turris, what they should have kept. They need a two-way forward. They have no forward that is a good two-way. Their closest to a two-way is, like you just said, Zach Smith. And Zach Smith is one way. He's a defensive, responsible forward. He does not bring offense. And tonight he was trying to bring offense because the Sens are clearly in desperate need of some offense. They had Mike Condon in. Like, like I said, he's been struggling, but he did his job. He only allowed two goals, one on a penalty shot. So tonight, um, I think the Senators, they're seven straight without a win. Uh, I think they need to bring up Thomas Shabbat. I think they need to bring something to bring this lineup back together and not depend on Eric Carlson because right now Eric, half of Eric Carlson's ankle is still sitting in the garbage. So I don't even know if his ankle is going to grow back properly, but you can't just depend on Eric Carlson. They have their top line of their three skilled guys, and Matt Duchesne sucked. So other than that, they need to maybe spread that out. Um, hopefully, they start heating up. And with the Habs, I don't think the Habs are. I don't think you're going to see any different from the Habs. They've been without Shea Weber the last few games, but that team will only make the playoffs. Only make the playoffs if Carey Price plays the next 40, 50 games. Like literally, without Carey Price, the Habs are garbage i'm sorry trent your second favorite team with the halves and actually i didn't know that that you had the background story but the halves as a team and you said it with jonathan juan he's not a natural i mean he could probably adapt as a centerman and i've talked about that trade the pk suban and shea weber trade that's like a trade like shea weber's career is going to be over soon enough so it's like there's not much of a future to look at that trade but with the Druan for Sergachev, they're both in the early stages of the career. So we still have so long to analyze that trade into the future. But right now, Tampa Bay has definitely won that trade. Montreal needs an offensive defenseman, and I will keep repeating myself. They, their defensemen are too slow. Their most mobile defenseman is Victor Mete, who might they might end up sending down uh, for the Canadian World Juniors. So... I don't know. I've talked enough. Do you want to add anything else to this? Basically, the storyline for tonight was Carey Price, but anything else? Very well said there, John. I mean, to add to your point, if you guys are curious about Thomas Shabbat, I mean, he came into the season, only played the first five games with the Ottawa Senators, but during those first five games, the Senators were undefeated or they only lost a few games in overtime if they did lose any games. And he had three assists in five games played. He's only 20 years of age. And you look at the rest of their defensive core, and honestly, I'd rather have Shabbat over a guy like, you know, Dion Phaneuf personally, even though that Dion Phaneuf used to be a little bit better, you know, I'm sure that John really knows a lot about Dion Phaneuf with him being that ex-captain with the Toronto Maple Leafs. For me, you know, he's kind of starting to move down a little bit in the rankings. Johnny Oduya, I don't think is a very good pairing. They play a lot of Johnny Oduya with Eric Carlson. I think that's a very, very poor pairing personally. I liked Mark Mathot last year because he had the good offensive and the good defensive defensemen balancing off of each other, but I don't think Johnny Oduya is a good enough defensive defenseman to help out that Eric Carlson. I'd rather have a Shabbat, you know, a guy that's, you know, a bit younger at 20 years of age, still has a lot of potential left in him and still has a lot of room to grow. To add to your point that they really have no depth when you look at their bottom six and continuing with the Ottawa Senators, looking in their minor leagues, they really have no one else to call upon if they do end up getting an injury or anything like that. I mean, the only real player that they have is Logan Brown, you know, who's been there for a few years. Colin White's been there. But besides that, they have really no one else. They've always had that good depth the past few years with Chris Kelly and, you know, Chris Neal and things like that. But that depth has decided to retire and move on. And with Montreal, as you said, Victor Medi is pretty much their only good offensive defenseman. Besides that, they have Shea Weber, who's okay. Jeff Petrie, who's getting drastically overpaid at $6 million 
for basically being a top four, top six defenseman in the NHL. Carl Alsner, who's also getting paid $6 million a year, who's not doing very much. David Schlemko, who's a seventh defenseman, getting paid $2.5 million. Jordy Ben, who's basically a good like sixth defenseman, getting paid a million dollars. And then you look at their minor league team, and they literally have no one. I mean, they had Charlie Lindgren, they have Zachary Fukali in goal, but they really have no one in their like minor league that could come up and really step up for the Montreal Canadiens at forward because you look at their forwards and they have so many older players. Thomas Klanek, almost 34 years of yeah, age. Trent, no, man, that guy is done. They, Montreal has no one. Like, that's the problem. But Klanek is just, like, so done. I mean, Pacioretty is, like, in the now, but he can't help out at all. Um, like, because they're, they have no depth. Same with Ottawa. They have no depth. Um, and I think they, sh back to Ottawa, um, Freddie Clayson to me has been a real good defenseman for the Senators this year. When Carlson was hurt at the start of the year, he was their best defenseman tonight. He had four hits. So you look at that guy, he's defensively sound on that, on that Sweden, uh, trip for them. He, he had a couple points. He scored a goal. Um, he's been probably one of their best players. And that's surprising because that guy, to me, last year was like a bottom pairing guy. You weren't going to see much other than that. Uh, but in my opinion, I look at it as neither team has depth, man. No, neither. I think Montreal, for my opinion, is in such a bad situation because you have Carey Price, who's still considered in his prime. But they have nothing else. So, like, as a Canadians fan, I would want to start over. But you can't start over with Carey Price in his prime or else trade him. Get the value back. But as me and Kev talked about in the NHL trade rumor video, which you guys should check out, that would be such a hard trade to make for Carey Price. Because one, Montreal would not get the value back that they wanted. And two, that's a hard contract to trade. I'm not saying that's – Carey Price deserves every penny of that deal. 100%. But the fact is, the salary cap for a lot of teams is already tight. So bringing on a $10 million contract will be really hard. And so this situation, to me, I want to see how it pans out. Montreal is not a team that can have a run. Carey Price can get them to the playoffs, but that is as, as far as he can get. Because there's no way Montreal can win a seven-game series. Just riding off of Carey Price. There is there is no way. I don't know. Do you agree with me on that, Trent? Do you think that Carey Price can bring them to the playoffs? I, I, like, I think so. But like, how far can he bring them? I, I think we've seen it for the past few years that Carey Price can consistently make the Montreal Canadiens get to the playoffs. But I completely agree with you that Carey Price is only one man. He can only do so much. I mean, we're seeing it right now also with the Edmonton Oilers with Connor McDavid. Everyone thought that Connor McDavid would be able to lead them to the playoffs, lead them to that Stanley Cup final this upcoming year, and the Oilers are struggling. They're not doing very well because Cam Talbot's not pulling his weight. Leon Dreisaitl, you know, he's not the same Leon Dreisaitl that we saw last year doing absolutely amazing on that second line. You know, he's still doing okay. He's still doing decent, but he's struggling a little bit. And McDavid, yes, he's still a point-of-game player, but he's only one player. Every single team needs to have more than one player. I mean, Look at the Pittsburgh Penguins at what they've had for the past few years winning that Stanley Cup dynasty. They had Crosby at the first line. They had Malkin on the second line. They had great defensemen like Justin Schultz stepped up. They had Chris Letang. They had two great goaltenders in Marc-Andre Fleury and Matt Murray, two great starting goaltenders at least. You know, you could maybe argue that Matt Murray has now become to become an elite goaltender. Maybe it's a little bit early to call him that. But honestly, they've both been so solid. And, you know, Carey Price... Maybe it is time for him to move on. I mean, he's going to be making, as you said, on average, $10.5 million a year for the next, you know, five years, I think, is the contract. And you'll look at the teams that can, you know, sign up that contract. There's only two teams that can take that without the Montreal Canadiens taking some cap back. And those two only teams are the Arizona Coyotes, which you're not going to go and win a Stanley Cup there because they have a lot more problems, not just in goal. And then the Carolina Hurricanes, who... Yeah, you know, they're starting to build up better with being better defensively, and their fours are slowly starting to grow. But still, I mean, I don't think Trent. that you're going to go to either one of those teams and win a Stanley Cup. Yeah, Trent. That, that's actually funny that you mentioned the Hurricanes because uh, they're a team – I watched them against the Leafs Friday night. Uh, the Leafs beat them 5-4. But the Hurricanes could have 
should have won that game. The only reason they lost that game was because of goaltending. So that's kind of interesting you bring that up. I, I'm not gonna, I'm trying to stir the pot there, but like um, the Hurricanes, they need a goalie. Um, and I Montreal hate that needs defense, which Carolina has tons of. Carolina does have tons of. Um, I don't know, man. I just I feel bad for teams like the Hurricanes. They're actually a well structured team. They just they don't have goaltending. Where where Montreal's the exact opposite. Montreal all they have is goaltending. Uh, when Carey Price is healthy, he can bring them a a long way. I just I hope for Carey Price's sake that his career doesn't get any more wasted than it already is. So it's I I have we've talked about it so many times. In my head, I have no solution for Montreal but to restart. Uh, like I said, they basically only have two players in Patretti and Gallagher, or three with Drouin, sorry. And all their defensemen are slow besides Victor Mete, and then all they have is Carey Price. So, like, when I think of that, when you look at that, and you basically have no prospects and no system, that basically says restart all over it. But like I said, the problem is, what do you do with Carey Price? You don't want to waste the guy's career. Uh, do you want to add anything else to the game, Trent? Um, I, to me, in my opinion, I'm really excited to recap this Lightning Bruins game. Um, I have a lot to talk about it. We have a, we had a lot to talk about in this, but I think we have a lot more to talk about in that game. A lot more positives, in my opinion. Absolutely. Very well said there, John. Don't you guys go anywhere. You know, it will be about like 10, 15 minutes. We'll have to set up. We'll have to get Austin. And every single time that we get Austin, it seems like he can't hear us, but yet we can hear him. So it's the it kind takes of thing. A bit. we need like a five minutes to go. Hello. How are you there? Are you there? Are you there, Austin? Are you there? Hello. Eventually he'll exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It'll be a little while. But, you know, we will be setting up for the second recap. And you guys get three tonight because if you just showed up near the end, I mean, you know, we were talking about how the poll was so close that we decided why not do two games because the poll was that close. So we can't do that every single night. But, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to do some more cool anything, NHL things working up in the channel. I was talking with the guys yesterday, and John and I are actually going to be doing a live Watching a game, video, live reactions, and Leafs Saturday night. Canucks and Leafs are gonna get lost. Friendships are gonna like John and I are gonna be at each other's. Oh, it's it's not gonna be friendly. It's not gonna be friendly at all. So be sure to come back. Tune in. Yeah, come back on Saturday and tune into that because it's gonna be a lot of fun with John and I yelling at each other at full capacity. Oh wait, and there's one more thing. Hit the subscribe button. And, Very and, well said. And you know what? We're at 2,000 and something followers on Twitter. Can you guys hit the follow button? Because a lot of people don't know how to connect Twitter to YouTube these days. It's not that hard. Hit the YouTube channel link. Get to the channel. Subscribe, like, and comment. Those are the three things we want you to do, and we'll give you the content you need. Just give us suggestions. So you guys that are tuning in right now, we're going to do the Lightning and Bruins video, and hopefully – max 10 minutes i'm saying max 10 minutes i'm saying 10 minutes because like we said it takes a couple minutes to get austin in here but austin's our special guest because it was his lightning tonight but he might be upset he might cry so tune in if you want to watch austin cry please tune in i couldn't say it better myself there john all of us here at the blv peace out everyone peace out boys and girls